Bruce Greenfield was the county superintendent there at the time. Um, we had our field service reps had met with the Island Heights Board. We met with a number of them down there and Bruce met with some of the other groups together to talk about the process. Seaside Heights, Seaside Park, Island Heights, and maybe Ocean Gate, certainly Island Heights. The three governing bodies and the three boards of education, three to five, passed resolutions, sent them to the county superintendent, and said, we would like to explore a dissolution of the region. The county superintendent, Dr. Bruce Greenfield, did a feasibility study. Um, he wasn't so sure there wouldn't be educational disadvantages. He was a little bit concerned. The matter went to the Board of Review. The Board of Review said, put it on the ballot. Put it on the ballot. Come on in um, Trey Meadows. They put this one on the ballot. It went down to a resounding defeat. On the overall regional structure, about 84% no, 16% yes towards this solution. So now what? Well, those who were representing Seaside Heights and Seaside Park filed litigation. It's not fair. It's unconstitutional. It violates due process. It, we can't get out. We're just like those Manchester regional people up north. Except they had a racial impact issue, these guys did not. And so we think you should disband the region. The litigation with respect to the governmental entities was dismissed in February 2008. The individual plaintiffs were allowed to continue. In 2009, April, Central Regional put on the ballot a proposal to change to 100% pupil count, which was defeated by not quite as large a number as the previous dissolution election, but it was defeated as well. Around that same time, there were a number of agreements that were being worked out with some of the surrounding school districts, Tom's River being one of them, um, between Seaside Heights and Seaside Park. Tom's River agreed to take some of the sixth graders from Seaside Park free of charge. The idea being, some would say, we'll get them into Tom's River, they'll like it here, they won't go to Central Region. There was a lawsuit filed saying that Tom's River, you're interfering with our legal rights as a regional school district. That litigation is still going on. There are some other send receive issues going on. Seaside Park is now a non operating district, which sends all of its kids to Tom's River. Part of the idea in the beginning was that Seaside Heights and Seaside Park's two schools, which are now empty, would become part of a regional preschool program that Tom River was born. One of the dynamics uh, is that the superintendent of Tom River is going to <laughs> it's not a good day when the guys in the FBI jackets are carting boxes out of your house. It's not a good day. Not a good day. Uh, he, he resigned. There seems to be a dearth of information available with respect to what all these agreements were about, and there appears to be some move to maybe settle that litigation, but it's still going on. So. As we, as we sit here today, it's still on, going on, it's on appeal, we'll see what happens there. But it's, there's a lot of drama behind the scenes in this particular one. But still, the same kinds of issues, different demographics, inability for everybody to agree. They haven't tried to come up with that middle ground of whether a 50-50 or 60-40 or 39-61 or whatever this put may be. I mean, if you can find something that's mutually displeasing to everybody, you know, maybe that'll work. They say that's a sign of a good settlement. But so far that hasn't made its way. And Task Act Valley, not too far. You probably read about that up here. Wilcliffe Lake, Montville, Riverdale, Hillsdale. In September 2009, the governing body of Whitford Lake and Montville put a non-binding <coughs> referendum on the ballot. 
Should we proceed and move towards a dissolution or withdrawal and change in the reasonable cost of portion of the The voters in those two communities overwhelmingly said yes. In the 2010, in the 2010 special election in September, the board put on the ballot a proposal to change to 100% people. Not surprisingly, would have played in Montvale who supported that change. Voted yes. Hillsdale and Rivervale who did not support that change voted no. And if when you look at the vote totals, they were strikingly similar but in different directions. You know, a thousand votes, literally a thousand votes for, 25 votes against in the vote play. 25 votes yes in Rivervale, a thousand votes against. I mean, it was just, the numbers are very, very similar. This is, I like numbers. I, mean, I just go, wow, look at that. That's almost the same. All of them. Two said yes, two said no. So they still have the same funding form. Let's see where it goes. The challenge in these circumstances is, unless you're starting from scratch, unless you're starting from scratch, there's no happy result where everybody can be a winner or a loser. I said that here in 1999, that when you change the cost of portion, then there's winners and losers. How big a winner, how big a loser, may determine the ability to pass. That really hasn't changed. So what are some possibilities to do that? Ironically, it's 18 years since the Bagley legislation which was 18 years before chapter, after chapter 212. Maybe it's time for a legislative proposal that would change in some way. There are two proposals in the legislative hopper right now, and I will tell you they were, they were filed in January of 2010 and they haven't gone anywhere. Uh, vote one in the Senate, one in the Assembly, to change the vote in a dissolution, not the cost of the vote, but in a dissolution to Eliminate the overall regional vote. If you had a majority of the constituent districts, it would be approved. They haven't gone anywhere. And I should talk about that bag of legislation as well. Um, I'm just going to jump back in 1993 for a minute. Bagger was from Union County. Union County Regional was the first regional to dissolve in the state at that point. And the change facilitated that dissolution. The Union County Regional was made up of Berkeley Heights, Springfield, oh gosh, Clark, Mountainside, Garwood, Chemical Thing. And that was the precipitating district the event that pushed towards the dissolution when the regional decided to close Kenilworth kind of High School because it was unpopular. The legislation enabled the change because four of the six districts approved it. It was an overall vote in the regional. Two districts got dragged along kicking and screaming and they dissolved. The irony is about three years later, Rowley and Winfield Park, two communities there, looked to sever a send receive relationship. And when Winfield Park would leave Rowley, it needed to have a place to go. It decided it would go to Kenilworth. Why? Because Kenilworth needed students because it was underpopulated. So guess what? I think the regional made the right decision way back when, but politically it led to the dissolution. Will there be, could there be a possible proposal for a vote to change the vote requirement? That's a possibility. Could you have additional factors? I had an interesting discussion with somebody yesterday, and again today. When districts state aid is calculated, one of the factors that determines, and it's an artificial construct only for state aid, one of the factors that's part of that determination of local share for state aid purposes only. Equalized valuation, gee, what a surprise. And income. Income determined by New Jersey state income tax. Income's not part of this particular formula in terms of how you calculate districts relative wealth. Communities relative wealth. Something to think about. Is there a legislator out there who's got an interest in this that would be willing to bring this forward? Will that legislator who represents you right now be the same person there after the redistricting they take in the census? I don't know. 
uh, the challenges for districts with differing equalized valuation and, and pupil count to find a happy solution. And you know, as you can see from the example so far, um, you have to have the planets all aligned in order for it to work and for people to be mutually happy and best. I think that covers just about all I can tell you right now about cost apportionment. I'd like to open it up to the board for any questions that you guys have, and then we'll open it up to the folks here. Yes, sir. Do you uh, TV Yes. Are they still litigating that? <laughs> this this occurred when? 1995, I believe. I think they finally settled up on the top of it. I think so. About a year or so? Not too long ago. They're not too long ago. I'm going to say maybe about a year, year ago. So maybe 14 years of litigation. Do you have any idea how much litigation was involved? You mean dollar you're, wise? you're asking dollar wise. I don't know. I don't have the answer. I know they argued for a long time. But 14 years of litigation. I will say, and, and to be fair, Lower Camden County Regional, which dissolved two, three years later, in 1970, they did not have that same level of level litigation. There were some squabbles about the dollar shares that were being apportioned out, but within a couple of years, they pretty much resolved that. So there's, they probably learned from Union County. Um, but yeah, it was the big issue there, you had six communities and four buildings. There were two buildings, two communities that didn't get built. And they were left with very little trouble on all the seven months. So, I mean, that was a significant issue there, and that took a while to resolve. Yes? Well, you know, uh, whoever brings